Hi there, I'm Stacy, the mixed media artist behind Studio Stacy. And in this week's video, I am painting an entire painting and it's for the 100 day project. So I thought I would discuss briefly what the 100 day project is for those of you that may or may not know about it. And then also what I'm doing for the 100 day project. The 100 day project is hosted over on Instagram by two people and I will put all the information in the um, description box below so you can read all about it if you're interested. I did not create the 100 day project. Um, but basically you choose something to do for 100 days. And this year I chose to paint for 100 days, but more specifically paint what my newsletter subscribers see out of their windows. So I will be painting for 100 days and I'm going to be making 15 paintings. So basically a painting a week and my newsletter subscribers have sent me pictures from all over the place, uh, some great pictures and I'm really excited to start the project. I am painting them on 12 by 16 boards, um, wood cradled boards. And so let's start the video and you will see week one of the 100 day project coming up here. I am in my painting clothes and the wax is heated up. And I have my torch in hand, but nothing to paint on. So let's make those frames. Headed outside to make the wood cradle panels because it requires some power tools. And it also requires two of us to make these. We chopped down a bunch of these long boards to make the frames and then use an old framing kit that I inherited from my parents. And we nail the frames together with the nail gun to make sure they're really secure. back outside and we cut the tops to those frames and just double check with a couple quick measurements that they fit properly before we glue and nail them together here. did not record a couple of the steps which are we fill in the nail holes with some wood filler and then sand them down to make sure everything's nice and smooth and that the boards are ready to take the wax. So there you have it. Framing or rather building the wood cradle panels. Now that the wood cradle panels have been built it's time to paint the edges and prep them just a bit more before I apply some wax. So here I am mixing up some acrylic paint along with some extender and that just waters it down and makes it more like a stain. I like the way it looks on the edges of the panels and I like to paint them before I put the wax on so that they're ready to go once the painting is finished. Next, I take some uh, painter's tape and tape the edges and that just prevents all of the wax from dripping down all of those nicely newly painted sides or edges. Lastly, I take some encaustic gesso and I paint the entire top of that wood cradled panel. I tend to do a couple coats of this and just make sure that paint is on there real smooth and then it's ready to take the wax. And the reason I paint them white is just in case I decide uh, when I go to paint the painting to glue something down that's a little bit see-through or I don't have to use as much 
white encaustic paint initially and that way I can conserve the paint a little bit. And there you have it. The panels are ready for some wax. The encaustic gesso is now completely dry on those panels and so I'm starting with and I'm heating up that panel because of course it's cooled down. There hasn't been any heat on it with my torch and I'm using a pretty good size flame to get that heated up nicely. The wax works much better if you have it going onto a hot surface. Rather, it goes on smoother if you have it going onto a warmed surface. So after I get that warmed up, I apply some wax, which is has been melting in that little uh, fry pan or griddle there. And then I just apply that with a natural bristle brush and there you have it. Once the first layer of wax is applied, I heat it up with the torch and then apply several layers after that. After several layers of the clear encaustic medium has been applied, I am applying several layers of white encaustic paint. And I do that basically the same way. I just apply that to a nice warm board, which is why every once in a while you'll see me put my hands down on this board through the whole painting process. You don't want it too hot, but you don't want it cold. A nice warm board is how you want to apply the wax and it goes on much smoother. And you'll see there I flip that panel around and that's just to get to the other side. So again, I just torch in between each layer of this white paint and apply several layers of the white. It's now the next day and I have kind of sketched out a plan of how I want this painting to look because obviously I'm working with a plain old white um, board now. So I've just sketched that out in a notebook. I've decided to use a notebook for the 100 day project so I can keep track of paint colors and uh, what painting I'm doing, rather what photo I'm using for everybody. And yeah, and here I'm just making those marks on the board and kind of getting a rough estimate of where I want the horizon line to be. And this happens to have a tree line on it where I want the tree line to be. Now that I have that horizon and tree line figured out, I'm just doing a quick underpainting, um, which is just a real quick painting to get some color down on the board. And it's not going to be the final painting. That's why they call it an underpainting. And it helps with the actual final painting. <laughs> um, it adds some dimension and some colors and some layers to the final painting.
am now adding in the sky with some blue paint and I just mix my paint as you've been seeing me doing right there on the griddle. I call that my paint palette and I just mix it right on the griddle and I don't change my brushes out a whole lot unless I'm drastically moving from say a blue gray to an orange. I don't change my brushes out. The white brush always stays white but the rest of the brushes I mix and that just helps mix the paint not only on the palette but then also on the painting and makes a more interesting painting so you don't have a solid color of one color of blue all the way through. to a different day and I am adding in a tree, painting in a tree with some India ink. Uh, India ink works really nice with encaustic paint and you can uh, paint right over the encaustic wax with India ink unlike a few other paints that you can't use with encaustic. So I'm just adding that tree in and I'm using a really small brush so I can get a lot of little details on that tree. So just like with all of the other layers, once I have that tree painted in, I have to fuse it with the torch. And the nice thing I like about this torch is you can turn the flame down very, very low. By turning the frame, the flame down low, I'm not completely obliterating that tree that I just painted in. And the torch is nice because I know, I know you've heard me say this before, but it's nice because I can turn the flame up very high or I can keep it real low. And it is now the following day and I've picked out a photo that I've decided to use from one of my newsletter subscribers. And I printed it out on to tissue paper. Um, this is a technique that I learned from another encaustic artist, and it's a great technique. So I printed it out onto some tissue paper, and now I need to apply that wax to the tissue paper. And I do that by just putting that onto my griddle and applying the wax to it. Rather, I'm applying clear encaustic medium, I should clarify that. And then, of course, I want to be putting that onto a warm panel. So I have to heat my panel up again. And because tissue paper is a thin paper and highly flammable, I'm using a heat gun rather than the torch because I obviously don't want to catch the tissue paper or anything on fire. And then I'm also using a metal spoon to heat the metal spoon up and burnish that down nicely so it stays put. Now that the tissue paper is down, I can continue on with the painting. So here I'm just applying some red to the ornament and continuing on with the painting.
using a, another small brush this time for to add in some white detail. And you'll see me going back and forth a lot through this next several steps, adding in detail, taking out detail with a small scraper, adding in some more detail with a Durant ink tense pencil, and then going back in with some more encaustic paint, a lot of back and forth and a lot of um, layering to make sure everything pops out of the painting and uh, that I'm getting all of the beauty of the original photograph in this little encaustic painting. So I'm going to speed the video up and just pretty much let you watch till the end. And of course I fuse in between each of these layers. So here you go. Thanks so much for coming along on that painting journey with me. If you enjoyed that, please give the video a thumbs up. If you are interested in seeing more, definitely hit that subscribe button. I would so much appreciate it. And if you want one of your paintings or one of your rather <laughs> photos turned into a fine art painting, sign up for my newsletter. If you're on my newsletter and haven't sent me photos yet, there's still plenty of time. So get out there, go through your photos, look out your window, take a snapshot and send me them. I have really enjoyed connecting with everybody that has sent me photos. I think that it's a crazy world that we live in where we get to connect with people from thousands, hundred miles away via online. So um, I've really enjoyed it. I love seeing what you guys find beautiful. So keep those photos coming and yeah, let's stay connected. Um, again, if you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. There are going to be 14 more of these videos coming your way. So stay tuned for that. And again, thank you so very, very much for watching. We'll talk to you soon and bye for now.